Um, and it's really just to uh, talk about you as a person. We, as I say, we know what you, we know so much about what you have achieved. Uh, you know, your the many accolades speak for themselves. Um, it's more about um, perhaps just understanding you as a person a little bit better. So um, you can answer to whatever extent you would or wouldn't like to, but uh, you'll see that they're, they're, they're very easy. Um, easy questions. Um, the first one, I suppose, is that you you clearly take a great deal too hot um, on a personal level. And if there if there had to be one thing or one issue uh, that had to stand out above all of those, is there one that you would uh, that you could separate personally as being something that uh, that affects you? Generically, or a specific incident? Um, I suppose the... Generically. Gen, yes, yes, yes. yes. As, a, as, a, as, a, as a category. Yes, because you've... Ex you've been yeah, anything, anything that gets to treat people as if they were not important um, would affect me. Because um, I I was influenced, taught maybe, uh, and came to understand as central to our faith that each person is of infinite worth, you know, and that that was the reason why party would be unacceptable or any any ideology that wanted to treat people uh, as if they were not who they were people created in the image of God it's happening even now I mean where you you feel that um, yes I mean we can't there are many good things that we have done. I mean, the government have accomplished. We have accomplished as, as South Africans. But there are also things that I don't think ought to be tolerated. Yes. Like, I mean, uh, the levels of poverty that there are that we have in in so many places. Um, I mean, they, they are really dehumanizing uh, degrees of, of, of poverty. Mm. And, and one gets upset about that, yes, yes, you know, yes. and you get upset over it, uh, in part also because, although it is true mm. that you, we, we couldn't change things radically overnight. Mm. The fact of the matter is that there are some people who have become quite extraordinarily wealthy, you know. And and that's not I mean that's not to condemn wealth. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean wealth is is okay. Mm. It's a neutral thing, mm. morally neutral. Um, it's what you do with it. With it, sure. Uh, but what what has been so distressing? I mean, it has been the fact that, say, you speak about um, black empowerment and all of that, mm. uh, which I think is a good thing in its concept yes. that you are saying people who have been disadvantaged uh, need more than just a leg up. Yes. The trouble has been that when you look, um, it has seemed to be the case that it was an elite that was being recycled, yes. you know. Yes. Um, and I think, I mean, it's now admitted on all sides 
when some of us mentioned it for the first time mm -hmm. a few years ago, people were upset. Yes. But now it is being accepted that mm. that is true. So I I I would feel myself that uh, uh, we have not done well by as it were the little people, the small people. And that upsets me. Now someone as you were alluding to earlier of your of your age. <laughs> your, <laughs> your, your your health is as is uh, as much as your calling is yes. critical. And uh, how do you make sure that you're okay, in in order that others are okay too. Well, you know, my wife and I frequently just sit and say, "Aren't we so blessed?" Mm -hmm. I mean, when we look at where we come from and uh, where we are, mm -hmm. it's just amazing. I mean, almost mind-boggling. Mm -hmm. Uh, the way there's been a turnaround. And one of the many blessings we have had is that we have some devoted uh, physicians. Mm. And, uh, we have a woman doctor, mm. she's Swedish, she married an, uh, an Afrikaner. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ingrid LaRue, mm -hmm. who has looked after us, and I say us, my wife and I. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, I mean, we got a, we got other people. When I was Archbishop, we we got a few bishops mm -hmm. for her to look after, and mm -hmm. and she was the first um, uh, civilian doctor to examine Nelson Mandela. Mm -hmm after his release because, you know, he spent yes. the first night uh, with us at Bishop's Court. Yes. Now, Ingrid LaRue has looked after, after me, after my wife, since 1986. Wow. And she, you can't fault her devotion. Mm -hmm. and well, I mean, there's no question about her. Uh, uh, her skills, actually, you know, two of her sons mm -hmm. are now physicians themselves. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so her, her poor husband is a, is an economist, I know. <laughs> so he must be feeling very lonely yeah. in the house. But yeah, she she runs a uh, a, a a clinic in Kailicha. Mm -hmm. uh, you would have thought that we pay her a huge fee mm. because we can call on her anytime. Mm. And then she she she, she used to work um, at uh, uh, Rotesky, and so she she was able to get us. We have <laughs> we have mm. a specialist physician mm. who looks after us as well. Mm. Um, Professor Sorry Benata, who has just uh, retired as a professor of medicine at UCT Medical School. So we mm. we have on call some of the best medical uh, expertise. Mm. This is one of the reasons why when I was uh, diagnosed with uh, prostate cancer <clears throat> and uh, Sloan Kettering in New York said they would be quite happy uh, to uh, treat, treat me for free. Mm -hmm. And it was at the sort of height of the TRC. Yes. And, and so the TRC agreed that it made very good sense for me to go away. Uh, because if I stayed in South Africa, I would, I would, I would not be too far away from yes. from the office, yes. and people would keep bothering me. Yeah. If I was in New York, no, no, 
And when I, I, I announced that I was going, uh, Maribo was still the president, and he called, he called me. Mm. And he said, mm. uh, uh, some doctors have, uh, have uh, called me uh, because they, I think, are upset. Uh, that you are going to I get see. your treatment in mm -hmm. New York as if yeah, they are they, yeah. yeah, it wasn't that. In fact, they took my doctor here, mm. were in close consultation mm. with, them. with those people, yeah, so mm. uh, they agreed that, yeah, it would be a good thing yeah. to go. Um, so I, I've heard that, mm. and then, uh, and that's for free. Mm. Uh, and then I've had uh, uh, specialist urologists, uh, and they too have been looking after me since 1986 for free. Uh, I pay for medicines, mm -hmm. um, like now, I mean, the, can the cancer has mm -hmm. come back, though so it's as Somebody he, I saw an, an oncologist in, mm. in Atlanta said, oh, you have a good cancer. <laughs> if there, if there can be such a thing. Yes, I thought, it, a I, thought, I thought it was uh, uh, something of a uh, oxymoron, wasn't it? Mm, yes, uh, but <laughs> I would it, say. Is that it's not aggressive. Okay. So, uh, I, I, I I have hormonal treatment. Yeah. The last treatment I had, in fact, was in 2006, so. which is uh, quite amazing. What they do is they let the PSA go up to yeah. 10, yeah. and then zip it down yeah. uh, to as low as it can go, yeah. and then stop the treatment, wait for it to go up again yeah. uh, to 10. Now, the last treatment was 2006, and it's Still, it's taking long, I mean, it's, it's only now got to fall, yes. which, uh, I mean, but uh, the, the point one was making is, we have all of this wonderful treatment, uh, we pay, uh, mm. we pay for, I mean, if we go into hospital, mm. um, like, I mean, when my wife was going to have, a knee replacement, mm -hmm. then you have to pay. Mm -hmm. But uh, almost all of the medical uh, services, I mean, the services from from those doctors is, is incre incredible. I mean, yeah, they are. So, what do you attribute that to? To your wife's cooking, or to your your, your good health? Obviously, to to the. What? To no, I I don't know. <laughs> the, you mean the prostate that? It's well, in general, your health is good. You know, I, I, I exercise. Really? Yes, I used to I used to job, mm. and then later on uh, it was clear it was not good for my yeah. for, for no for my knees. Your knees okay. Yeah, for my knees. So I walk now. Okay. Uh, and every morning I walk uh, at least for thirty. 30 minutes, wow. uh, a brisk walk. Very good. Uh, and when I'm traveling, yes. I I do the walk in, in, the, in, in the hotel room. room. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, obviously, you th there are many there are many causes, many organizations. The Heart and Stroke Foundation is a is a, is one of those. It's a, a an NGO. Do you think government should be more actively involved with NGOs like this, especially? with cardiovascular disease being such a, it is a very big problem, as is every major disease that we, yeah, we struggle with. But, you know, in, 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 in your opinion, is there, because in, in the case of, say, heart and stroke, government is, 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 has, has no involvement, does, doesn't participate. It is something that they do entirely on their own, and there are many NGOs like this that, that I think are, that are, you know, offering great services, but they, they, they battle. So at what point, in your opinion, do you think? Well, you know, one of the things that we are suffering from in South Africa is that in the apartheid years, mm. 
donors and especially government donors overseas <coughs> used to fund NGOs uh, because they said the, the government of the day was an illegitimate government. Mm -hmm. Now that you have a legitimate government, a lot of NGOs, not just uh, the, the, the one we're talking about, her, mm -hmm. uh, are suffering a great deal because the funding that used to come to them is now siphoned off mm -hmm. and, 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 and it's being, it being given largely uh, to government mm -hmm. uh, recipients. I, I, mean, I, would, I would myself say I hope that uh, the authorities would recognize mm. the almost indispensable mm. value of, of, the of, of, the, of the NGOs mm. and, 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 and really set up a partnership mm. with them, a collaboration. Mm. And, and since what they require most of all is financing, uh, that the collaboration would would express itself tangibly yeah. <clears throat> through yeah. through through uh, supporting them and 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 since the NGOs have if, if, I mean their network is mm. <laughs> is far far reaching mm. uh, the chances are it it will they would thereby ensure I mean, that mm. uh, very many more of our population have right. access mm. uh, than would be the case otherwise. Mm. So I would, I would, uh, I, I would certainly um, support a, any call to the authorities mm. uh, to be, to be far more uh, engaging, engaging, mm. and 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 that I mean they. Yeah. More generous mm. Mm. Uh, and open. Uh, I mean, they they can put uh, stringent conditions mm. and and demand. Uh, it's right. I mean, it's public money, mm. um, and and people have to be sure that uh, it is money that is going to be used mm. for the purposes for which um, it was given. Uh, but the it's almost the case that um, good, efficient NGOs mm. um, ensure that you get value for money, right. you know, in, in whatever sphere, mm. I mean, health. And since, I mean, government was, has also been saying that they wanted to make uh, medical treatment more accessible, mm. um, one of the ways would be through uh, encouraging, supporting, uh, buttressing mm. Um, mm. NGOs mm. like yeah. these. Yeah, the, the structures already exist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But now, I was thinking on the way here today that last week you had a call, you went. Since January, you've been halfway around the world and back. So many people are knocking on your door because of the great work that you've done and the ability that this this strange ability that you have, or this gift that you have, to be able to unite people in in ways that you know that that you've experienced. How do you choose where to go? Because obviously you have you probably have fifty people wanting equally valuable um, and valid things for you to do. How do you how how do you how do you choose what you do do and what you don't? Well, so, some of the choices in a way are made for you. Like, say, going to Kenya. Yeah. Uh, I had myself actually not thought that I would be able to have gone yes. or done anything. Uh, but I was invited by uh, uh, Bishop Dandala, mm. who is a South African, but he's now yes, yes. Uh, General Secretary of the All of the Corners of Churches. Uh, and there are, I mean, sort of categories of things. I mean, there are some of the things that you say are must-dos. I mean, yes. if, if 
if that kind of person asks and the situation is that, then you say that that is almost certainly uh, unavoidable. Yeah, you you're must. Going to do, yes. Yeah. Um, I also, because uh, this year yeah. we are very really trying to be <clears throat> um, more strict and, and, and more um, discriminating mm. in, in, in saying we were, were actually putting almost artificial mm. uh, things in place. Yeah, yeah. we're saying You're this month. No, yeah. I Can't no be. going anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, I mean, you end up actually so so debilitated yeah. and exhausted yeah. that you are you are, you are, you are worse than yeah. useless. Yeah. Uh, so, if if one is going to be able to make a useful contribution, then it's going to have to be the case that. I can't spread myself thin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now there are things to which I belong, like I mean the elders. Yeah. That more almost de decides yes. your 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 your, your, part, yeah. your your agenda in a way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you're quite right. I mean, I I was just looking at the little pile of invitations. Um, like I mean, the King of Jordan is yeah. saying. We have a meeting meeting of Nobel laureates. We've had a number of these meetings. We'd like you to come. And doing? and uh, former President Havel is also saying um, we have this forum, which yet we had thought was going to be one a once off. Uh, can you come? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Um, and then schools, mm. you know, universities. Yeah. There are some things that are very close to my heart. I, I'm a patron of something called Sabil, mm. which has to do with the Palestinians. Mm. Um, and, and that is an issue that is close to my heart. Mm. The issue of Burma is close to my heart. I'm, I'm very fond of Hausan mm. Suu Kyi. Yes. They, they, the same with who? We must. Oh, yo, 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 yo. We must, we must. Look at. I will keep going. I will keep going. I'll just start a jazz. Yes.